When the first Audi A5 came out in 2008, Walter da Silva, who was the boss of the entire Volkswagen Group design, he said that the A5 was the most beautiful car he ever designed. And think about it, 2010s, that era, it was peak of putting V8s in small German sports cars, such as the RS5, which we're gonna to review today from, of course, a front side rear interior and then we're going to take it for a drive but you also had the mercedes c63 with its beastly brutal v8 and you also have the only m3 to ever have a v8 the e90 so it was a very interesting era and i think maybe the best era when it comes not just to the powertrains but also to the designs i mean just look at this beauty i can't stop looking at this color as well it's such a beautiful finish to this so let's start with the front end and let's talk about this design. Huge thanks to my friends over at Urban Motors for letting me review this car today. Click the link down below in the description or simply go to urbanmotors.com to check out this RS5 and their entire inventory of cool cars. However, you need to be fast, otherwise I might actually get this myself. So what we have right here is the facelifted version. The first RS5 came out in 2011. If I had to choose between the facelift and the uh, non-facelift, I think I'm actually gonna go with the non-facelift version for two reasons. And there's are two key graphics in the front end that is missing on the facelift, but was intact on the pre-facelift. And when you look at the sketches, I think those two features were intended to be a part of this generation A5 and RS5 throughout its life. One was this hood line. You see this line going down here in the facelift, it kind of melts in and disappears in the front end fender. But in the pre-facelift, this line actually extends and continues right next to the grill and continues down to the lower part of the, of the front end and frames the front end in a very beautiful way. So that's one of the reasons why I would prefer the pre-facelift. The second reason is if we look at these headlights, th don't get me wrong, I think if this front end looks absolutely stunning, but I do prefer the more simple design of the uh, first generation A5 and RS5 headlights for the simple reason that we have this being a square and it doesn't have this curvature to it. It's a little bit bigger and last but not least, it was one of the very first production cars to have the typical LEDs that we have in the R8. The R8 was actually the first one and then the RS5 continued that trend by having those dots of LEDs going in in a very nice way. And you can definitely tell that it's an Audi coming at you even today if you see a 2008 a5 or rs5 that it is an rs5 and is an audi because of that very strong identity in the front end so what separates this from for example a regular lesser s5 or or an a5 first of all we have these big intakes in the lower end i love this chamfer that we have going around it kind of frames it in a nice way and these fins two black fins cutting across what i would like to see here though is have this same feature this same uh, texture or finish on the main grille. I know you can get this with the black, uh, blacked out grille and the blacked out logo in the, in the middle. That's probably what I would go for because I think it kind of connects better with this feature right here. One detail that I love about this front end is this very thin curvature. We're gonna have a look at the side view and I'm gonna show you uh, what I learned when I was studying car design when we were in projects with official Audi designers and what they told me when you design an Audi, what you need to have in the side view. We're gonna talk more about that in just a second. And we're also talking about big grills today. But the thing is, you, need, you, you can still have big grills. Genesis has huge grills today. BMW also has huge grills. But the problem there is that they're not as well integrated with the rest of the front end graphics. And in this case, we have the same angle here as we have in the headlight. Stuff like this means that it is integrated well in, in the front end. We have this angle here, same being as this angle in the lower part of the grill. And all of this comes together and makes it feel like even if you have a huge grill like this, it still fits the front end both proportionally and graphically. Now, as you know, the most important view to view the proportions of a car is definitely in a side view and just have a look at all these beautiful lines that we have going on in the RS5. I totally agree with Walter da Silva when he said that this is the most beautiful car he ever designed. And that's saying something because he was the boss of Volkswagen entire group. So he designed a lot of cars or were part of 
designing a lot of cars. So when I was studying in Italy, studying car design, they took, we did projects with Audi, Volkswagen and Lamborghini. So the Audi designers, they said that this line here, which by the way, is just a beautiful line. This looks like it's actually a, uh, a pen line that's been sketched onto the body because it has this peak to it. So it's not just a, 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 a section of two surfaces meeting. Where it meets, it has this peak that creates a very sharp line. In the new RS5, I think they took that a little too far and I think that line is protruded too much. But here it sits just perfect. So what they wanted to do is, the, the Audi designer said that you need to be able to sketch an Audi using just three lines. So you have this line at the bottom right here and then you have the beautiful shoulder line dipping over the rear axle and then continuing straight and then going back up over the front axle. And the reason they have that is because they want to some sort of way to visualize the Audi Quattro four wheel drive system. And they do that by having these two lines here going above the rear axle and the front axle, having this bit of a curvature going right above these two points. Now, one way that you can separate the RS5 from the S5 and the, and the A5 is that this, this actually sits a little lower from factory, not by much, but just a little. One thing that I would change here though, if I were to get this RS5, I would probably change back to the original 20 spoke, uh, 20 inch, five spoke wheels because those wheels to me they feel like they're a big part of the Audi RS5 design. These look fantastic and I love the way they sit flush almost with the bodywork but the original five spoke designs they feel like they're part of the RS overall design. Ever since the first S3 and the RS4, the B5s, Audi RS models have always had these special five or multi-spoke wheels. Very simplistic wheels. They feel bigger than they actually are and I think I would switch those out and bring back the original wheels to this design as well. Another detail in the side view that I'm, when I see it now in side view it kind of makes sense to have the uh, front grill be silver as well is that we have this silver trim piece going around the window and on top of that we also have the typical silver side mirrors for the RS models. I know these days you can get these side mirrors in whatever you want in carbon fiber even but to me I would definitely stick with the silver, specifically when you have a gorgeous deep metallic blue like this, this makes the side mirrors pop and you instantly know if you're into cars that when you see a silver side mirrored Audi, you know there is something special about it. All right guys, coming back to the three quarter rear view of the RS5, I think this looks so planted with the wider fenders that we have on the other RS5 model. This is one detail that I absolutely love about the A5 all the way up to the RS5. They all have this detail. When you look at the original design sketches of this generation A5, they call this the nail spoiler. You can see why, because this has one little curvature right at the very end point, the top part of this uh, rear end, and it definitely adds this sharpness to the rear end. We don't need a wing. We don't need a small M spoiler up here because this does that job even better. This is integrated in the bodywork, and I think it's one of these details that maybe not a lot of people notices, but it makes such a huge difference to have this integration in the rear end. Then we have the taillights. These are updated for the facelift. We have this LED. If I look at the facelift and the pre-facelift in the rear, I would definitely prefer to have these beautiful taillights. Super simplistic, stretching out the body even more in a horizontal way because they're so thin. And we have the reverse camera mounted right here. Good position. Looking down here though, this is where it gets really special with the RS models. As you know, Audi has a pretty unique way of designing their tailpipes. And this is no different, specifically here in the RS5. You have huge bazooka tailpipe. I can put my fist in here and I'm not even touching the edges. That's how big these tailpipes are. And you also have this nice cutout for the diffuser. And I also like that this is body colored. Usually I don't like these uh, diffuser diapers, I call them, when you have a body colored piece that is not really connected to the rest of the body. I would maybe want to see this in black, but having this framing in the body color, it just makes it pop. It, it pops out the, the rear diffuser more than if this were to be black. And I think it looks really good on this car. Looking at it from a rear view, even though you're not a car person, you do realize with the wider stands, the wider fenders, these big diffusers and the bazooka tailpipes, you definitely know that there is something special about this Audi.
If this nail spoiler is not enough of a spoiler for you, you do have the option to engage this uh, automatic uh, wing at the rear. And this pops up at, I think, about 75 miles per hour. But there's also a button inside which pops it up manually so you can show off while you're cruising through a 20 mile per hour school zone. Welcome inside the 2013 Audi RS5. And immediately when I sit in here, this is a place where I want to be for a very long time. I love everything in here. Everything feels like it's almost hugging you. I don't know why, because the, the dash itself or the, or the center console is not really angled towards the driver much, but somehow everything feels like it's kind of creeping in on you. And I really like that feeling. I still have a lot of space in here. We have carbon fiber trim around the uh, gear selector. We have physical buttons for what the most important things. Remember, this is 2013 when they did interiors the proper way. We also have a infotainment screen that also sits very deep underneath this big cap that kind of covers both the infotainment screen and the gauge cluster. You have analog tachometer and speedometer with a small little display in the middle. Personally, you know me by now, I don't need anything else than this. One thing I do want to change though, if I were to buy a car like this, the RS5, I would probably get some aftermarket paddles because these, I can barely see the plus sign and the minus sign sitting at a normal driver position. So I want to have them extend a little bit further uh, above and below this spoke so I can clearly see them. I do kind of like that they're attached to the steering wheel. I'm not sure if I prefer them being attached to the column itself or the steering wheel. I think both work pretty well. And we have some nice vents, typical vents that don't try to hide anything. They're right there and a proper glove box as well with the Quattro, of course, sign right here on the dash. Looking at the steering wheel, very simple design. It's kind of small. I like that. I don't really necessarily like big steering wheels. This feels small and sporty. You have a flat bottom steering wheel with the beautiful RS5 logo to remind you of what you're sitting in and what you're driving. You also have RS5 in the gauge cluster stamped on the tachometer and you have RS5 right here in the seats. All right, so let's fire it up real quick. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> In front, we have a 4.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 with 450 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque, which I feel feels a little low to me. But at the same time, you got to keep in mind that this V8 revs to 8,000 300 RPM, which is just insane for a V8 this size. We're taking the Audi RS5 for a drive, and this is really exciting for me because as I said, uh, I agree with Walter da Silva. I feel like I'm doing my surroundings a service right now by just driving this car so they can have a look at it as it goes down the road. That's how beautiful I think this car is. And it, it's gonna age really well, this design, because it has those timeless proportions and, and key lines of Audi intact in the body of the car. This is gonna look just as good when it came out in 2013 as it will in 2113. It's gonna be a classic. And I don't think that only has to do with the powertrain. This is the, one of the best engines Audi's has ever made. And it sounds so good, but it's a naturally aspirated 4.2 liter V8. You have 450 horsepower, 316 pound-feet of torque, which I said, feels sounds a little low and you can hear the rumbles on the downshifts i just love everything about this car it's such a cool driving experience rs models in the past used to have this kind of uh, notion about them that they were front heavy and that that was true it, they really did understeer a lot and the reason for that was because the engine sat in front of the front axle now in these models these later rs models they've moved the engine back so it feels a lot better in the corners as well. It is just a fantastic driving experience, even though I'm just going straight here. But uh, still, it just feels solid. I feel like I have a lot of power under my right foot and the noise is constantly there. Oh, those downshifts. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I'm gonna miss V8s. Now we have twin turbo V6s and four cylinders trying to compensate for what the naturally aspirated V8 has when it comes to just noise, vibration, and power. But they're, they're doing a good job, but it's still not, it doesn't compare to the, uh, uh, to the naturally aspirated V8s. So I'm in manual mode now. I'm gonna take it a little easy so we get some distance to the car in front of us and let's see what this has. Oh, what a noise. I have a big problem. I really, really want this car. I think it's almost a perfect sports car for Colorado. With the quad roll with drive system, you're covered during the winter. You don't need to worry about traction and stuff like that. You, this car will get you where you want to go, even in uh, winter conditions. And on top of that, it is by far one of the best looking Audis ever made. Even though I personally prefer the, uh, the pre-facelift version, this still looks so good, specifically with the new LEDs that we have in the front and the rear. Another thing that's very interesting about the RS5 is that it has a dual clutch automatic even from 2011 the face the pre-facelifted version even had this super snappy dual clutch automatic and i think it has to be one of the uh the the earliest dual clutches automatics that, that came out to the market because it feels really good and i would assume if you go back to 2011 12 years ago you wouldn't think that a uh, you know auto manual with the paddles like this would be this quick but it actually is it feels like a proper modern um, dual clutch automatic and that that was a huge surprise to me unfortunately i have to return this car even though i really don't want to thanks again to urbanmotors.com for making this review happen link to their full inventory down below in the description